Making a light blink and key shot is tedious and time consuming. The worst part, there's no easy way to make the light flash repeatedly. However, you are in luck, my friend, because today I made something for you to solve these issues. Lots of products include blinking LEDs to communicate a charging state or some other function. Here are some examples I found around my house. Now I've shown how to make a blinking LED in Keyshot in a previous video, but the biggest issue with that approach is making a blink cycle repeat over and over again. That's because in Keyshot, you need to manually draw out each blink, so I decided to come up with an easier approach. My solution to the blinking light conundrum is to leverage video maps. On these two examples on screen, you can see where I used image sequences to control the blinking LEDs both on the PCB as well as on the external hard drive. I've also got another tutorial about how video maps work, which I'll link to. But for today's solution, I'm going to use an image sequence to control the brightness of a light. Let's see how this will work. Let's say we have an emissive light in Keyshot. I'm gonna open its material graph and I'm gonna import three different textures, one white, one black, and one gray. Normally we would control the brightness of this emissive light by changing its intensity. But we can also control it using textures. If I plug the white texture into its intensity, it's the equivalent of setting a value of one and we get a bright green light. If I grab the gray and plug that into the intensity, it's kind of like setting the value at 0.5 and if we were to grab our black texture and plug that into the intensity, it's basically like setting the intensity at zero. So we can use actual image textures to control the value of this light. So for this next part to work, you're going to need the free video maps that I created for you. So make sure you pause this video. I'll have a link down below that'll take you to my file vault. Once you've gone in there to get your project files, unzip the folder and come back and we will move on to the next step. All right, so I'm inside of a new Keyshot file where we're gonna make our blinking light. I don't need the materials panel up, so I'm gonna close that. Next, I'm gonna hit Control G to create a ground plane. Then I'll hit Control one to create a cube. I'll click OK. And I wanna fit and center the cube. I'll hit Control, Alt, Shift, right click, and zoom out just a little bit. And now we've got our cube centered in the frame. I'll middle mouse click and drag to the left just to move it on over a little bit. Next, I'm gonna go into the camera tab and create a new camera that saves this position. And we'll go to the environment tab and under the brightness, I'm gonna set it at 0.2 to make it fairly dark. This way we'll be able to see our light illuminate. And lastly, I'm gonna to go to the lighting tab and enter product mode, which will help give us some nice global illumination. Now let's make our cube blink. We need to double click on it and change its material from diffuse down to emissive. Now, if you're on the latest version of Keyshot, this should also work with area light material, but today we're just gonna use emissive. Next, we need to go into the material graph for this material, and we're going to need a video map node. So we're gonna right click and go to textures, and then I'm gonna choose video map near the top. Double click on our video map node to access all of its properties. At this point, we actually need to load in the video map that I made available for you in the file vault. So if you've downloaded those, we're gonna click on this folder and we're gonna browse to the location you have those saved on your computer. So within the video maps folder, you should have some more folders. We're gonna choose the second folder called ease in, ease out. And we're gonna go into the second option, ease in, ease out one dash one. And we're gonna see a lot of textures. Click on any one of those, hit control A if you're on a PC or command A if you're on a Mac to select all those textures and then click open. By loading in an image sequence instead of a video file, we save Keyshot from having to convert our video file to an image sequence. So here we have all of our frames. The next thing we wanna do is connect our video map node to the emissive node, and we're gonna let go somewhere in the middle and choose intensity. And of course, our cube goes black, and that's because the first frame in our sequence is indeed a black texture. To make sure this is mapped properly, we're gonna to change to box mode and center on part. And I wanna make sure this is plenty large enough to cover our model. Just to be safe, I'm gonna set it to 100 for its scale. And if I scroll down to the bottom of the properties, I wanna make sure I change the FPS, which is the frames per second, to 30. Keyshot defaults to 30 frames a second for all of its animations. So we wanna keep this at 30 frames a second in order for this video map I made to play back at the intended speed. 
All right, next we'll click in the real-time view and hit A on the keyboard to open up the animation timeline. And if I click play on the animation timeline, we should see our cube start to blink, and that animation is being controlled from our video map. Now you can see the playhead keeps repeating over and over, but what if I actually just want the animation of the light to keep repeating without restarting the animation? I can easily go into my video map properties on the right-hand side here within the material graph, and I have this option to adjust the playback count. If I change this to three and hit enter, now you can see it's going to play three times before it repeats. And this is the power of using video maps over the traditional way of using the curve fade node in Keyshot to animate your lights. I'm excited to share with you the Keyshot Animation Masterclass. This course will guide you through my proven method of creating professional quality product animation videos. From research and inspiration, to planning and execution, to post-production, delivery, and archiving, I've covered the entire process beginning to end. With a runtime of about 20 hours, it's the most comprehensive course you're going to find on product animation. To see a full breakdown of chapters, lessons, project files, and more, follow the link below. Now there are a few more settings you should know about when using this approach. So let's go ahead and see how we can control how bright and how dark our light gets using another node. So right now we're only controlling it with the video map, which means we're limited to black and white or values of zero and one. But let's say we wanna make our light brighter or maybe not completely black. We do this by clicking on the connector between these two nodes, right click and add a utility called color to number. And in here we have an output from and an output to. These act as limiters, if that makes sense to you. We can take our output from, which is zero. This represents our black values we're getting. If I type in point one, I can limit it so it doesn't go to pure black. It just gets fairly dark. If I go all the way to when our light is brightest, let's say I want it to go beyond this value of one. I can type an output two of like say five and now it gets much, much brighter. So this is a cool way to control how bright and how dark our texture gets using numerical values as well. This gives you more flexibility when using these video maps because we're not just relying on the black and white values within the video map. We can remap those to numbers that are either higher or lower than one or zero. Now, what if we wanna make our light actually look like it's glowing? We'll close the material graph. Let's go to the image styles tab. I recommend using a photographic image style to prevent the light values from clipping. Uh, if you want, you can go ahead and play with some of these image transforms to give you a little more contrast and a little more brightness. But what we really want to do is go down to where it says bloom. If I enable bloom, I want to bring the intensity up to one. And then for the radius, I want to choose a large number like say 50 or maybe even 100. And we see we get this glow. If you need the bloom to only affect the light and ignore all other reflective objects in the scene, increase the bloom threshold until the bloom is only visible on the brightest parts of the image. And from here, you can reduce the bloom intensity as needed. Now, what if you want a different blinking pattern? That's the only downside to this approach. Unless you make a new video map, you can't really customize how the light blinks. But that's why I created 20 different video maps for you to use based on the most common scenarios I could think of. Here's how each image sequence differs. We have three easing modes, ease in, which fades the brightness in, ease out, which fades the brightness out, and ease in, ease out, which fades the brightness in both directions. Within each of these three easing modes, I have made five blink ratios. This chart should hopefully help visually explain what each of these ratios means in relation to the blinking light. So use the maps from the higher ratio folder if you want the light to blink less frequently and a lower ratio if you want it to blink more frequently. Now let's say you wanna load a different video map. Just double click on the video map node and we're gonna click the folder that we did before when we loaded in our frames. Browse to where you saved the video map textures. And in this case, I'll try one of the random ones. I'll go and choose random three, select one of those textures, just click on it once and then hit control A or command A to select them all and hit open. And Keyshot's just gonna replace all the frames it had from the previous sequence with the one you just selected. Now, if I go ahead and play this back, we'll get our blinking flashing lights. And it's good to check when you load new frames if the frames per second got changed. And in this case, it did. For some reason, Keyshot doesn't remember. I like to keep this at 30. If you want to speed up how fast it plays, you can always increase this frames per second. 
or you can slow it down by typing in a smaller number. Like for example, if I change this to 15, it will play at a slower rate versus if I set it to 60, it will play at a much faster rate. And finally, for those of you who wanna get a little bit wild with your blinking lights, I've included five bonus random video maps. Uh, they'll basically blink erratically for five seconds each. Now it's your turn. Download those free video maps and make something rad. And if you do, please share your results with me. I love to see those. And until next time, happy rendering.